just very brief background, the difference between kinematics and dynamics, of course. Uh, kinematics are concerned with the geometric relationship between different elements of the robot and its surroundings. And dynamics are concerned with the forces and the masses that are operating on the robot. The kinematics of the differential drive robot are shown here. We have the linear and angular velocity. So the linear velocity of the robot along this x-axis and uh, the angular velocity of the robot omega around the robot's z-axis. And they're related to the Cartesian coordinates, the velocity in the x-direction, the velocity in the y-direction, and the velocity in the z-direction of the world frame by this Jacobian matrix. The dynamics are expressed here. We have uh, a matrix for the, for the overall mass of the robot, a matrix for the Coriolis and centripetal forces and accelerations on a robot, a friction vector, uh, a matrix B that maps the control inputs to the torques that's applied to the actual robot, and we have a tau vector that's the control input and a tau D that can or, it's, it's an optional tau that can be used to simulate uh, torque disturbances. The idea is that we have a reference robot that describes where we want to be at a particular time instant. And our, our approach is to take an actual robot and drive it to the reference robot's location and orientation. And in order to do that, we need to know where is the actual robot and where is the reference robot. And we do that with these variables here, this XR, this YR, this theta R. That's the reference robot's pose, the location and orientation. And we have the actual robot's location and orientation described by X, Y, and theta. We use this rotation matrix to map the errors between the actual robot and the reference robot's locations and poses into the world frame, which we then define as E1, E2, and E3. So the errors between the actual robot and the reference robot. What's the error between the two? And it's already been derived, right, in, in, robot, in robotics literature that there's a command velocity considering only the geometric relationships between the two robots. There's a command velocity that will drive the actual robot to the reference robot's location, and that's defined here as VC. And VC is a function of the errors, as you can see, E1, E2, and E3. It's a function of the velocities that we would like to be moving at, VR and omega R, or WR in this case, which is the reference robot's uh, speeds. And we use those values to calculate the velocity that we need to apply to the actual robot to get to the reference robot's location. The proof for the kinematic uh, controller, which is, of course, what VC is referred to, is included here. We're not going to spend much time on this because it's not the focus of the project but I have included it here for completeness. So let's talk about the program, because really that's the whole focus of this, this presentation and this project. I broke the simulation up into three main steps. We're going to start off by defining some robot parameters, some initial conditions, uh, how we're going to store the data inside the robot. That's kind of the preliminary things, and after we do that, We'll take a look at computing the kinematic control, the dynamic control, applying the dynamic control to the dynamics, computing a new kinematic position, and storing all that data into vectors so that we can then plot the data lastly. So the first step is to define robot parameters, initial conditions, and data storage, and we do that here. And I'll just run through this briefly, because you can look at the code yourself and kind of get an idea. But we define the mass of the robot, mass of the wheels, the moments of inertia, these different friction coefficients or maximum torque that the wheels are allowed to apply. 
we define all those things and even the gains in the kinematic controller. We, we define those variables. And one thing I would like to say is all of these relationships that we have between the different components on the robot, they relate to, obviously, physical geometric quantities on the robot, which you see here in the, in the figure to the, to, to the right. We define a sampling rate of 0.1. We initialize our actual robot. So lines 43, 44, 45 are just saying that the actual robot is not moving. It's sitting in one place. There's no torques being applied to the wheels. There's no velocity. It's just sitting in one stationary location. But the reference robot, on the other hand, on lines 46 and 47, it has some linear velocity. In this case, 0.5 meters per second. So the reference robot is moving at a linear velocity, but the angular velocity is zero. We calculate or we give the reference robot an initial pose of a location, zero, zero, but an orientation of pi over two. So instead of being at zero degrees, it's pi over two. The reference robot is headed straight that way. And the actual robot is at the same location, zero, zero, but it's at a different orientation. It's a little less than uh, 180 degrees. So we got a reference robot telling us to be facing this way, and we got an actual orientation of this way. How do we fix that, and, and what's the response of the robot as it tries to make that, that change? We initialize some neural network weights. Once again, the focus of this, this project is not necessarily about the control, so I won't talk about that here. But I did use a neural network controller, and we'll see the performance of that here in a bit. But I use a neural network controller in this particular case. We initialize our vectors so that we can plot this data after our simulation. Here's the meat and potatoes. This is the most important part of the simulation. We use a while loop. We iterate through the while loop uh, with the kinematics controller, which the main focus of the kinematics controller is to produce the command velocity. The command velocity is used inside of a dynamic controller a controller of your, of your choice, it can be PID, PD, neural network controller, adaptive control, whatever architecture you want to use, you can use that, that control torque there uh, or that control algorithm to generate a tile, to, to generate a control torque. The control torque is then applied to the dynamics of the differential drive wheel. And the, the whole purpose of the dynamics is to say, if we apply a control torque to this robot, what is it going to do? What velocity is the robot really going to have? We can idealize it and say, we apply this torque, the robot should move this fast. But using the dynamics, we're able to get a better description of that interac interaction. So the dynamics give us the actual robot of the wheel, of, of the robot, excuse me. And then the actual velocity of the robot gets applied to the kinematic equation. And the kinematic equation says, okay, well, if you apply this control torque and you go through the dynamic and you got this velocity, then this is where you would be at. And we do this every single simulation step. So by, by following this methodology, we get a robot that's moving as we iterate through the, through the loop. And it's very important to store all this data into vectors which you see from lines 87 to line 99. We store all that data in matrices so that we can plot them. Last step is to go ahead and plot. So you see here the commands for plotting the vectors. The kinematic controller is on line 75. And let's take a look at that function. The function has several inputs, the robot's parameters, the actual velocity of the robot, the robot's poses, both reference and actual poses, and the reference robot's velocities, which we defined in the main script outside of the while loop. And we need the sampling time to use in our discretized equation. I think lines 6 through 13 are pretty, pretty self-explanatory, so we'll skip over those. Lines 16 through 18 are probably the most important part of this particular script or at least a piece, an important piece. 
you take the kinematic equations and you discretize them using the sampling rate that we define in the main script outside of the while loop. And we update the reference robot's position and we calculate the error, right? The error imposed from the reference robot and the actual, actual robot. And we define that in the position error vector. We pull in our gains on line 27 for the kinematic controller. And line 30 is where we actually generate the command velocity. This is the velocity that we're supposed to be able to apply to the actual robot to move the actual robot to the reference robot's location. In some algorithms, control algorithms for the dynamics, you need not only VC, but you might need VC dot. So here we calculate that quantity as well. Control, once again, this is not the focus, so we won't spend much time here. But on line 80 or 76, we define a uh, control function. That function can be replaced with whatever control function you would like to put there. In this particular case, we're just using this example with a two-layer neural network controller. The dynamics on line 81. The dynamics is, once again, a function, but it's only using the robot parameters, the velocity of the robot, and the previously applied torque on the wheels. So we use this function file, pull in our relevant robot parameters, the different geometric relationships and friction coefficients, and we map the linear and angular velocities of the robot to velocities of the wheels, which we use in our friction vector. We define our mass matrix and our centripetal and Coriolis matrices. We have a friction vector that we use using the wheel velocities that we just calculated. But in this particular example on line eight, uh, 38, we're zeroing out that vector just to simplify our analysis. On lines 44 through 47, we're setting the disturbance torque to be zero. And on line 50, we use a transformation, a mapping of the control inputs to the torques applied to the actual robot. Line 54, we discretize the dynamics. You can see on line 53 that I referenced the autonomous wheel robotics course. Um, where this particular dynamics equation is coming from. But this is the general dynamics equation, and it's discretized here so that we can use it in our loop. One thing that I should mention is that going back a slide, our sampling rate is different from the sampling rate of our main function file. If you remember, we defined in our main script outside of our while loop a sampling rate of 0.1. Here inside of our dynamics, we define a sampling rate of 0 0.01. And that's a value that, that can change. You can play with that value and analyze the performance based on that. If we look at the kinematics next pose. So looking at the main, main function file, we, we just generated the velocity of the robot from the dynamics. So this is the actual velocity that the robot is moving at. And we take that velocity and we apply it to the kinematic to see, okay, once we apply this velocity, where are we at? We thought that we would be able to apply this command velocity and it would put us where we needed to be, but we went through the dynamics and we may not really be where we, where we thought we would be. So let's see where we are. And you do that in the kinematics next pose. So the actual velocity comes into the function on line four, along with other relevant variables, but we calculate the next pose using the velocity that we just generated from the dynamic to get the robot actual current pose. And of course, this is just the kinematics equation discretized.